All right, hopefully the uh, hum of the uh, fans and everything like that in the background won't uh, matter too much. But I've been going through the gib adjustment, okay, because I never really cared for how I did it the first time because I didn't have a freaking clue what the hell I was doing. So I thought I'd uh, come back and, and I've got them adjusted. Uh, basically what I did is I've got it down to where I have no fishtail, and, and what I'm doing is I'm grabbing the end of the the table out here and pushing it, you know, back and forth to see if there's any movement here. And I have measured it basically, and there's less than a thou, uh, depending on exactly where you measure it, kind of thing. They they say in the instructions uh, these and and in the parts breakdown these show up as cap head bolts. Okay, uh, and and this isn't for this is for me, in case I have to come back and do this again, which I will, uh, periodic maintenance. Um, and it's also for the guys newer to this stuff than me, okay? Basically what I did here was I tightened everything down fairly evenly, okay, as best I could. Pop all the nuts loose. Uh, and I'm just going to do it to this one because this will have the, the least amount of effect, basically. This one, since since I now have it to where the table will come all the way over to here, I don't want to touch this one because <laughs> that maintains my adjustment when the table's all the way to the right. Basically, I went in and, and uh, I, I loose. Well, let me show you this first here. Okay, this could be a bolt according to the instructions and the uh, parts breakdown and stuff like that. It is a bolt. Um, it goes into, it goes through, it's a through hole here, passes through the saddle and goes into a threaded hole in the, uh, in the gib, okay? So basically, since this is supposed to be a bolt, you can take that in there and you can just run that down and get that snug and forget about the Allen wrench on that one, okay? Um, basically what it does is it pulls the gib back against these when these are adjusted. What I was doing was, uh... I took the um, I took these, ran them in to where they were pretty tight because you don't want any says you don't want any movement. Make sure that it's not uh, uh, the heads or whatever. And then I snugged this up because it will pull against the slop in the threads. Okay, uh, and then what I did was I, I backed it off and then just ran it back up loosely, okay, just, just to where it stopped, and then I could snug that down again, and then I, then I had the indicator set on the vise or whatever between here and the uh, vise or something on the table, and ran it uh, ten thousandths one way back to zero, set zero, ran it another ten thousandths, and then back to zero. And that, I'm assuming, <laughs> uh, gives me my backlash. And I was at uh, four, five, six thousand, so I knew I had everything too tight, okay? So then I went through and popped it loose, ran it back down a little bit, and then I just made sure that these were still snug. And I'm just barely putting any snugness on there. Uh, just enough so they can't vibrate loose, basically. Uh, but I did that to all of them. Okay, and then I ran that test again uh, and got it down. And I'm down to the point now where I've got on the x-axis I've got uh, .0011. So one thousandths and one tenth. Uh, a backlash measured that way. Uh, on the Y, I did the same thing, and I've got it down to one thousandths. Um, so I'll put that into my compensation on Mach 3. I'm assuming that's uh, how it works, how it goes. And, and I checked it a couple couple more times, because basically, you know, I just, I just kept going in there and uh, loosening that up, making sure this was snug. Did all of them. Checked it. Uh, and then I also made sure that I grabbed the end of the table down there and pushed and pulled it back and forth 
to wiggle it around and make sure that I wasn't getting too loose. I don't think I can get it down below a thousandths without it getting too loose. 